guys, welcome back to Empowerin. I'm Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much for watching. So I have a video request from Dignan's Girl and she says, I'm graduating this semester and I was wondering if you could give an example of a brain sheet to keep you organized throughout your shift. There's actually a few things that I do and I'm going to show you um, the main things that I do to stay organized. And just know that every day brings with you like different challenges, so modifications and flexibility are huge. But let me show you the things that I do every single day, so let's get started. The first thing that I recommend is having a really good report sheet. This is the one that I use and what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a copy of this to my blog and I'll put the link below so that you guys can use the same one. Just know that wherever you work, they may have an, a sheet that you print out. To save paper, I usually use, if I do go to a facility where they print it out for me, I usually do try to use the one that they have. But this one gives you a really good example of the things that you need to ask and report, the things that you know you need to kind of know in order to effectively care for your patients. It's pretty self-explanatory. All you do is you just kind of like fill in the blanks. And as you're taking a report from the oncoming nurse, if you notice anything that's empty, then what you do is you just ask the nurse those empty questions, and that's pretty much it. It's pretty easy. The next thing that I do is I always follow my baseline morning routine. Like I said, I did another video, which I believe the name of the video is my baseline morning routine. And in that video, I do say the steps that I go through throughout the, um, the morning. Because like I said in the other video, the only thing that you re really can count on is that your morning will be similar. The rest of the day, really on a regular floor, can take on a number of different ways. So, and even your morning can have a lot of variability. But there's one thing, like I said, that you can count on. And that's, you know, you're always going to have to do your assessments. You're always going to have to give your medications and things like that. So this just gives you a list and I'm going to type it below just so you guys have it. The next thing that I usually do is I use sticky notes as if my life depended on it. I don't know how any nurse does not operate without sticky notes. I wish I didn't need them, but I have to say that I'm pretty much addicted to them. I don't know, they just, they make my life so much better as a nurse. So here are some things that I use um, as, you know, with sticky notes. First of all, I track my assessments. So I'm going to post this so you can see it better. But as you can see, I have my five or six patients here. Sometimes they're seven, hopefully not, but you know, you, we do what we have to do. And um, so as I'm doing my assessment, I check it off. Now, each unit is going to have a different amount of times that you need to assess your patients. And that's specific to the unit. Some units say one assessment every 12 hours is appropriate. Some say one assessment every eight hours is appropriate. And some say one assessment every 12 hours, but then every four hours you have to do a focused assessment. And what that means is that, let's say you have a patient, you do a full head to toe assessment in the morning, but let's say you heard crackles in their lungs or you saw edema in their legs, you're supposed to do another focused assessment on those areas, on those problematic areas to make sure that they're not worsening and you know make sure they're getting better. If that's the case, what you want to do is make a little sticky note like this, and that way you make sure you do you keep track of all of your focused assessments as well. Throughout the job, you're going to have a lot of different things that you have to keep track of. DVT prophylaxis is one of the major um, hospital-wide things that we're um, making sure of, and that is to prevent um, blood clots in patients. So it's a simple thing that we can do, like we can give a medication that can prevent blood clots, or we can put a machine that kind of massages the legs and helps with circulation, which would help decrease blood clots as well. Anyways, a patient has to have one or the other ordered. So let's say if I don't, I have a patient that doesn't have something ordered, then I will just write down those page, uh, those room numbers, and then make sure I speak to the doctor. And then as I speak to the doctor and get orders appropriately, I will check those off as well. One of the major things that I use sticky notes for is when I page doctors. So what I do is I have a very, like I use the same format every time to make sure I don't miss any areas. So I usually put the patient's name and room number at the top, and then I write down the situation. And you know, let's say that their blood pressure is high. Um, whenever their blood pressure is high, it's really important to know what their heart rate is as well, because that's one of the main questions that they have to ask you. 
and then I'll write down the time. Then let's say that they had blood pressure medications already ordered, like they take blood pressure medications every morning. I will write down what I gave and I will write down also the frequency of those medications just in case the doctor wants to increase the frequency or change things slightly. Um, then I will do my recheck about an hour later and let's just say it's still high. So then I'm going to go ahead and call the doctor. And then at the bottom I usually write the doctor's um, name right there. And then what I do is I fold this up and I put it in my pocket with me. And this stays with me. And the reason that is is because a doctor rarely calls you right back. If you're lucky they, they may. But let's say, you know, 30 minutes later they call you back and you're in the middle of talking to a patient or their family members and you know you you know that it's just not on your mind so they're gonna call you back you're gonna answer your phone they're gonna be like did you page me you'll grab your little sticky note and there you have it all the information that you need and hopefully he gives you orders appropriately and that'll just make your day a lot better lastly guys I use sticky notes for everything look I even put a miscellaneous section for things that are not emergencies and things that maybe I don't really have that much to do with. For example, let's say room 106 wants her diet change. She says, I don't have any cardiac conditions. Why am I on a low sodium diet? This food sucks. Will you please call the doctor and have this change? This to me is not a dire emergency. So what I will do is I'll try to wait until the doctor arrives instead of paging them for that. But if they don't come for like hours and hours, you might have no choice. Um, the other thing is, let's say room 104, the TV is not working. I am the last person you want to talk to if the TV is not working, but I'll put this note here, which reminds me to tell the secretary to page the mechanics. A few things that I do is I buy sticky notes by the bulk. Seriously, guys, these I buy like, you know, but this will last me a while. This will probably last about six months um, because there are a lot of sticky notes and I probably don't use that, you know, a huge number during the day. So guys, I thought it might be fun to have another giveaway for you. So I'm going to give this away to one lucky person. And I'm also going to give away a copy of my second book. So guys, if you want to win this, just give this video a thumbs up and post a comment on why you cannot wait to be a nurse. Or if you already are a nurse, why you love nursing. So um, you guys have until November 7th, 2013. And then I will randomly choose one person and I will contact you. Alright guys, I can't wait. Good luck to everyone and I can't wait to read your comments. Love you. Bye.